sprinting the whole pitch. Honestly, I thought I was gonna get asthma pump after that sprint. I run the whole pitch, I was screaming. And I thought, imagine if they'd have all pulled back and I'd just been covered in my own sick. He has the stamina of a 21 year old. He made me feel like I was 60. What's happening, it's Kem and we are doing some Puma unboxing. I've got three Puma boxes here. We're gonna have a little peek in each one. We've got three kits from three previous years. And uh, we're gonna be going through some memories of each year, some great memories, I can't lie. This is the first kit of 2019. It's bringing back so many memories. This was, this was my first year at Soccer Aid. Honestly, I think when I got the call up, I could have cried. <laughs> It was like the best moment of my life. Watch Soccer Aid in the barber shop when I used to work in the barbers. What memory comes to mind, like, I can't lie. The memory that comes to mind has got to be the goal. Here's a chance late in the day and Ken Setanay has made his mark from the bench. My first ever Soccer Aid appearance to score a goal and um, just the celebration, sprinting the whole pitch. Honestly, I thought I was going to get asthma pump after that sprint. I run the whole pitch, I was screaming. Score on your Soccer Aid debut, unbelievable and look, little. I don't want to say it, but a little on John Terry as well. Ah, now this. I remember this shirt, because this is the shirt when I first went to the rest of the world side. Scored my dream goal that I dreamt about since I was a kid. Kane! Back. That was my fourth soccer raid, but the first one for the rest of the world. And my son came to watch me, and I had an imaginary conversation in my head with 30 seconds, I think, left to play on the plot, where I was saying to my son, look, I've tried, I've done this for four years, I'm never going to score. I was literally imagining that conversation with him when Darren Fletcher played a beautiful ball to me. And I sort of went, ah! and then just stuck out my right foot, and I'm left footed And it sort of went in. Come on! <laughs> Lee Mack scores. Rob Bryden celebrates. I was so excited that I ran off, like, hysterical. And everyone was really nice and they all piled on me. And I was like a pro footballer for a moment. And as they were all around me, I genuinely got so excited. I thought I was gonna vomit. Next kit, 2021. One of my favorites. 2021 kit, Soccer Aid, the UNICEF. What kit this one is. What memories do I have of this? Um, do you know what? I feel bad saying this, but my memory of 2021 is poor Joel Dommer. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Joel Dommett's a good friend of mine, and he's not a massive football fan himself, and he came and he was doing it for UNICEF, and he was meant to be playing, and they had no goalie, and they slung him in goal, and um, yeah, he had a bit of a torrid time, didn't he, bless him. Saturday, Dommett's oh! missed it! And Kevin Saturday is a scorer again, and Joel Dommett has had an absolute oh! Tilbury docker. I took advantage of that, two goals that year. Side now, it's Ken, it's 2 0. A really well taken goal. This shirt brings back a lot of, I'd say, mixed memories. So, positive memories for, for many reasons. It's the shirt from the year that Soccer Aid broke the record once again for the most money raised for UNICEF 15 million pounds, which is absolutely insanity. Positive again because we won. <laughs> Even more positive because Lee Mack won the game for us. Lee Mack! Super Lee Mack wins! But my performance not so good. Dry your eyes, mate. This year, I'm on a bit of a redemption crusade. The stripes. They went for the, uh, the sort of, I was going to say leopard skin stripes, but leopards famously have spots, don't they? <laughs> Tiger stripes, that's the phrase I'm looking for. You can see me on YouTube looking around to all my team going, I'm going to score this. I think I might have said that the three years I missed it as well. I just was more relaxed. I didn't care as much because we were 3 0 up in the penalty shootout at that point, or 3 1, I think. The pressure wasn't really on. And I just thought, I'm not going to miss another penalty. I'm just going to whack it. Put your laces through it, I believe is the phrase. But I just, like that. And luckily, David Herwood was a bit injured. <laughs> And as he dives, he gets his fingers to it, but I reckon he'd have saved that under normal conditions, but he was injured. And when I say injured, I do, of course, mean very old. E Mac for the win. It's Mac. It's yes! in! I get to say it again. E Mac! I always think if I scored, I always plan to do a Mick Shannon. 
which younger viewers won't remember. How do you do, fellow kids? What? But Mick Shannon used to celebrate by going like that, up the wing. And I thought, I'm going to do a Mick Shannon if I score. Or the other plan was if I score the penalty, I was going to jump out into the over the stands and run out through the exit and not come back, symbolising, like, you know, I'm done now at Soccer Aid. And people would go, where's he gone? That was the plan. But of course, that's not what happens. When you score, you just go, ah! Look, aside from, obviously, I did score last year again, and it was another unbelievable feeling. Here's Kim to equal the record past David Herbert. And he has tonight on Love Island. Last year was just special. I just feel like the whole team, like we was all in the hotel together. We had a sick time. Everyone really bonded. And uh, last year was the first time like all my family come to watch as well. And it was like a really proud moment for me to uh, to score in front of like my mum, my dad, my nan and granddad, all of them. Last year was a special one for me. So um, good memories, good memories all round. But yeah, last year was a special one. Right, that was my uh, Puma unboxing. And do you know what? I can't wait to see 2023's kit. It's going to be mad. What's your favourite memory of the training week last year? Uh, me and Patrice ever won the one-legged race. <laughs> As a football fan, someone that's watched football since I was a kid, sitting with the legends that I've watched on screen for, for that whole time was just an insane honour, privilege, you know, very much in the TV at like an England camp or something. So the whole process is incredibly fun. The game is great, but those those days before are, the, I think, even better for me. I, I remember in training, um, seeing Cafu, looking up and seeing Cafu and thinking, oh, he's, he's getting on a little bit. Um, no doubt I'll be able to skin him. Ooh, you're hard. And then in training, this guy, he has the stamina of a 21-year-old. He made me feel like I was 60. It, it was mind-boggling how fit he was and how technically brilliant he still was. And that was really the moment where you realise that you are truly a muggle as it com when it comes to football. Mud blood who is muggle-born. Doing what he could do at that age with that level of stamina, mind-bending. <laughs> Sitting on the coach with Patrice Evra on the way to the stadium was was surreal. I love this game! <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, we were having a joke and a laugh and stuff like that, and he was giving me some advice. For a second, you know, I felt like I was maybe Raphael or, one, or Nanny or someone. <laughs> and for him to also just be so calm, I think I was a little bit nervous. I was trying to play it cool, but to see how calm they were, because obviously they've done this for their whole lives, was, um, yeah, surreal. Also a highlight, right, was when the stats came out, the only person faster than me was Usain Bolt. I've told a lot of people about that since. Did you even know who he was when the season started? No. Great job, that's how I guess it. Well done, man, well done. This is gorgeous. It's so cool. It's giving me metaverse, it's giving me rain data. Yeah, it's giving me matrix. Whoa. It's all about the story, right? So when you're pitching something, it's not necessarily about what's in front of you, it's about the story and what it represents. So this represents victory, of course. This is gonna be the shirt of the winning team this year. This is also gonna be the shirt of the player that scores two hat-tricks. So exceptionally uh, valuable. Um, and yeah, cheap price. I'll give you 50% of this shirt for 50 grand if you wanna bid and make an offer for UNICEF. It's a, it's a nice shirt, it's beautiful, really beautiful. This is a very good starter business. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money mm -hmm. for 35% of the business, exactly what you've asked for. It looks very much like the, the graphics you got in, uh, what's the film with Matthew Broderick, where he almost blows up the world on a computer. Matthew Broderick, war, war of the, what, 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 um. <laughs> This reminds me of Tron in the 1980s. It basically what it, what they thought the future would look like, and yet weirdly, it just nothing looks more 1980s than Tron. It's got that sort of Tron, 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 Tron sort of what they thought. Can, it, it, it's nice. It's got lots of blue dots on it. It's great. I like that. Yeah.